Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to make a video about how to be more efficient in PixInsight by organizing your dashboard and saving some presets. So it's going to be a very quick video, uh, just showing you guys the basics of the PixInsight dashboard and just quickly how you can make it better uh, for yourself. So I have five tips for you. Number one, so the top bar, as you can see, is pretty clustered. Uh, this is the default dashboard when you open PixInsight. And so what I like to do is to take off what I don't need and add what I need. For example, here, what I plan to do is to keep the important ones. For example, these two here are very important, which is the undo and redo buttons. This one here, I like to have it because you can see if you're working in grayscale or in RGB. So for example, if I forget to debayer uh, while stacking my images, I like to know uh, really fast if I'm, you know, in the right scale so it's kind of useless to have it there though so i like to just slide it somewhere else so you can just pick anywhere you want and slide it to your desired location so i'm going to slide it on the bottom here maybe maybe on the, in the middle here so i can really quickly see it and not miss it and then uh, those ones are all zoom icons which i feel like are pretty useless uh, because i don't really care about zooming in since i can just use the mouse uh, you know just scrolling uh, in and out but the problem is that it's, this is linked to is in the same section as the new preview and edit the preview and I really like to use those two icons because they're very quick to use so I actually leave this uh, this menu here as is even though I never use the zoom icons I don't believe there's a way to take off individual icons so I had no choice but to leave those here and then here I um, are more zoom icons which are completely useless to me I really don't need that so what you can do if you don't if you don't need something is to right click on it pretty much anywhere you want and uncheck what you don't need so we're going to uncheck zoom in this case and now it's gone and you see there is much more space for us uh, now there are even more preview icons but are those are pretty useful because you can just delete oh, by clicking right here instead of going to preview and delete um, and now so all of these are pretty much previews which is fine by me and then here we have uh, th yeah, masks um, these, those are pretty useful I would say if you have a mask for example uh, if you don't know what a mask is for pics inside you can just add a mask to to an image and uh, with those icons you can either delete the mask or invert it or uh, enable it or disable it and this is pretty cool. So I like to have those here ready to go. And um, the last part here is very, very important. I love this so much. You can just, instead of going to uh, the Process Explorer or up here on Processes and finding the um, STF. So let me just open a, a new image really quick. That's not stretched yet. Um, this is fine. Just a random one from a year ago. So, Instead of clicking here to stretch the image, you don't even have to open this anymore. You can just close that. You don't care anymore. And you can just go over here and click on this icon right here. And it's going to auto stretch for you right away. So it's really nice to have. You can even boost the stretch as well. Uh, so once again, without having to open the process. So it's really nice and really quick to use. So I like to keep those here. Now, the, uh, the one thing that I feel is missing from the menu is... Uh, so if you right click again and check geometry this will add what is it oh it went down here this will add a way to invert I mean to uh, rotate or flip the image without having to uh, to go to process and find geometry and find a fast rotation for example so you can simply go here and rotate like you like you would do uh, from a process so this was tip number one uh, changing the top bars Tip number two, um, let's head over to the left bar now. So on the left, we have several tabs. We have, I believe, six tabs. I only use three, uh, Process Console, Process Explorer, and uh, History Explorer. But um, so what I hate doing in PixInsight is when I quickly move my mouse around over here and I accidentally open the uh, Process Console. So this drives me nuts. And also when you do a process, this always opens and it hides the whole view from your image. And I really don't like that. I really, really hate that. So 
what I do and what you should do as well if you want to, you can go over here and click on the, the little arrow here and place this window somewhere else. So I like to place this window on the right bottom and now every time I do a process, my image is going to be clear. I can see as soon as it changes. So this is really, really a, a must do, I would say, for Pixel Insight users. And then this one, I like to keep it here. Also, I kind of feel like it should be on the right. For example, right top. So now when I go over here on the left, I don't have to accidentally open anything. So maybe I just leave it there as well. And on the bottom there, I just leave all the ones I don't really use, uh, you know, out of view. That was tip number two. Tip number three, which I believe is the best of all, is how to save presets. So let's pretend you have a whole workflow in your head and um, you know how to process images and you go through like, let's say 15 different processes every single time you process an image. What you could do is uh, find the ones you prefer, I mean, the ones you use all the time. Um, by the way, another small tip if you don't know, you can just go to any of those that you like and uh, when you press on them, uh, if you go down to heart here, you can add it to the favorites. And if you add it to your favorites, it goes in this tab here. So that's very nice to, to find your processes easily. But anyway, for this, uh, to save your processes, you can just open everything you usually use uh, besides the dynamic ones, because dynamic ones will not work. So you can open all the ones you usually use. Let's pretend we use those ones. Okay, let's pretend. Let's pretend this is our whole workflow. Um, go ahead and change all the settings that you think will always be um, the ones you will use. For example, uh, me, uh, I usually go down here and I press uh, K-Sigma noise thresholding and I can just change the amount, for example, whatever I usually do. And then once you're done with changing all the settings, oh, I do that too, you can minimize everything. So let's pretend everything is ready. You can minimize everything and put them in order of, you know, helping you to know which order it is. Uh, let's pretend I do that. Actually, up there. let's pretend, right? So let's say my whole process workflow is those five uh, processes. Normally I have like 20 of them, but let's pretend. Once you have this, you can go to File, Save Project, and you can save this dashboard. So you can pick a folder and uh, let's pretend it's processing workflow. Workflow. Oula. Workflow. And then once you save this, uh, as soon as you open it next time from this file, your dashboard will appear with the processes already um, ready to go. So that's really nice to have. And uh, everything else I'll leave checked. So now every time I process an image, I don't launch PixInsight from the application folder. I launch uh, from the uh, icon that was saved about the, uh, the project. So everything opens ready to go. I know in which order to go. I know what settings to use. Everything is always saved. Tip number four on the same uh, kind of uh, topic. If you are still a beginner, like a really, really beginner, so instead of having this list with the name of the processes, what you could do instead is open them, drag them one by one on the dashboard, and if you don't want to have, uh, if you're confused by the name, like this name makes no sense, right? Like HDR multi-scale transform, it's so confusing. What you could do is, so do that, and then uh, go to set icon identifier, and if you want, you can rename it to uh, use this to bring out details. So now you can have this instead. And then let's say this one was saturation. Uh, you can do, for example, do... See, this is a nice way to remember processes. Uh, if you're a beginner, I made a typo here, who cares? If you're a beginner, uh, you can have your whole list like that and just talk to yourself, like telling, having notes for yourself of what to do. So that's also a good way to have it. And now tip number five is a very, very small tip. Um, if you want to 
change some settings you can just go to um i think it's edit yeah global preferences and the only thing i changed is i like to have full screen as startup activated which because because i always process in full screen uh, that's just a very very small tip for you guys um and then just apply this process globally so it actually saves and um that was it so that was pretty much everything i wanted to talk about um so this is my final dashboard well my my real one is like full of processes already set up but um yes so i hope this will help you get uh you know process faster be more productive and um and yeah, if you guys have any tips uh, to be even better and uh, work even more efficiently on Pix Insight, let me know. And uh, I will add it to the uh, written post. So I'll see you guys next time. And clear skies.